everyone, I'm Tarani Sood and you're watching The Making Of. Firstly, I'd like to start off by wishing everyone a very happy new year and lots of good luck for the upcoming months. Our first guest for this year is someone very special. She moved from England to India with her husband and started Bhuira Jams in 1991 in Himachal. Through her ventures, she not only creates fresh handcrafted jams from the locally available fruit, but also empowers an entire village of women by providing them with jobs at her jam facilities. We welcome Lynette Mushran. Hi Lynette, it's lovely to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. So Lynette, I'd like to start off by asking you, how did the idea for Bhuira Jams come to you? Well, really it comes from the village. It's named after the village. And uh, in, the, uh, in 1992, we bought a little orchard up there with uh, a, a nice house with it. And um, I had no intention or grand vision or anything about making jams. Um, but when I got there and I saw what happened to the fruit, um, we, had a, we always have had a monkey problem up there and also the uh, windfalls are a lot. So I picked up, because it was an apple orchard, I picked up some apples and I made some apple jellies uh, at a time when I had nothing in my kitchen there. I just used what I had, one old pot, and I had no jam jars, so I put it in water, the era, water glasses. A couple of women were with me, and they said, uh, they said, let's have a, let's make a factory. It was their idea, really, because they thought that was really the end of all, you know, the best thing to, to have in their lives. How did you decide on the flavors for the jams? Can you take us a little bit through the process? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, the flavors first were all the ones that were grown locally because at the same time as the idea of giving the women work, I was interested that the marginal farmers who had one or two trees could just walk their uh, fruit up in a kilter, the Himal uh, Himalayan kilters, uh, up to the factory, absolutely fresh. So the first flavors were dictated by that. And then of course, later on, the market pulled in other flavors. So first it was local to the village of Buira or our panchayat, you can say. Then later on, when we wanted to do cherry jam, mm -hmm. then uh, we had to get them from Narkanda because you had to go to a different height. Right. And then, then we had people who just love marmalade because of the English, uh, the British Raj thing. So we had to get the uh, oranges or quinoas. At that time, we used to get them from the Mandi, Delhi Mandi even. So then we spread out in sourcing. But the main thing was those fruits. And we started off with those apple jellies, which are still, I, I rate very high because it's such a delicate thing to make. Yeah. Um, and I just loved all the plum jam and the apricot jam. I, I loved all that. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about the obstacles that you might have faced when you were doing these things? Well, of course, there, there were obstacles. Mm. Uh, I was one of the obstacles in a way because I never really, I, I jumped into things rather than the deep end. And so I think a, a little uh, better planning would have been done because when you make jams for your own home, that's different from making jams which are going to be sold on the shelf. Also making them at the height uh, is different from uh, making making it on the plains. There were some right. items which I just couldn't cope with up there for a long time till I adjusted. And the other obstacles were we were so remote. We had terrible power. Sometimes in the snow, there'd be no power for two weeks. Yeah. But the plus points were the women, the fruit, and I think the beauty of the place. I loved it there. Yeah. And I felt really also that I shouldn't uh, I shouldn't be up there just enjoying myself when my husband mm. was working away in Delhi. Uh, so I thought it's a good thing to do something useful. And the, the, at that time, the women had no cash at all. Right. Uh, they really had no cash. So if they ran, if they were single women or abandoned women and uh, ran out of uh, the little bit of money they had, the grocer would not give them any credit because they, they knew there would no, be no mon come, money coming in. Mm. So after they linked up with Buira, they their statue went up a bit in their families. And uh, in, in the village, they said, oh, Buira Kasat, then we can give an advance of something. Yeah. Yes, and um, to begin with, I was actually almost, I mean, they wanted, 
they wanted things which even the money they were getting wasn't enough. So for example, at the beginning, so many of these girls asked me to bring watches from Delhi. So I right. bought fairly cheap watches. And then they said uh, that they wanted pressure cookers. Then they mm. wanted irons. And then they wanted uh, 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 cameras. So by that time, they were having a different choice. So, you know, like just building on that, how would you say your entire venture has changed you as a person? Well, definitely has changed me entirely because uh, in a way, I was very romantic about the whole thing up there. And But if you're running any business, you have to be down to earth. You have to do the accounts properly. Right. And uh, so that, that did slightly harden me, I'd say. I had a different perspective because of what we were doing with the jams. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say was I realized, came to find out about caste, how much... It didn't hadn't impacted me when I was just living up there before we set up the factory. Right. But I found the women sitting in different groups. Um, the upper caste ones felt the lower caste ones were poorer, so they felt some of them didn't want to work in the factory even. Mm. Uh, and and uh, but I kept telling them I've done a lot of. I know it can't be changed overnight, so I kept saying to me all of you are the same, and I'm probably. In the, the, the lowest caste possible, <laughs> having come from over the, the, the seas to India. Can you tell us a little bit about the social initiative? You know, you have all these women that you've empowered, that you've given jobs to. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? There's, there's so much more self-confident after all these years. Uh, lots of the women have stayed with me right through. They've, they've got this, their, uh, their whole lives have broadened. Uh, for example, in, in the Himachal villages, mm. in the Panchayat, every family is invited mm. uh, to a wedding. But yeah. uh, if it's a, one of the other villages within the Panchayat, then only one person goes, so it was the man who went. And a lot of the women had never been to even the next door villages, which were just, a, I mean, 10, 15 minutes walk away sometimes. So that's, I think they've, they've been up to Simla, they've been down to Chandigarh, they've been to Agra, yeah. they've been down on workshops to uh, Belgaum, they've been to Goa. So not all, but some of them. I mean, yeah. I think that's been an amazing change in their lives. And right. um, uh, they learned tally, they've learned computers. They're very proud of their computer skills. And uh, which we, we didn't start straight away, of course. Yeah. Uh, but but um, uh, but it's happened. It's taken time, it's, but it's happened. Yes. Yes. So Lynette, you would have heard about Maggie India's collaboration with India Food Network, where they've come up with the Apna Food business campaign. Now, Maggie India is actually offering home chefs and entrepreneurs to come forward and showcase their talents by offering them a chance to start their own online food channel and food delivery service. What do you think about this campaign? Uh, I think it's a super campaign. It wasn't there when I, came, when I started my little business. And I think it, must, it will be a wonderful support, especially some of the online uh, and, uh, uh, support that they will will give these new entrepreneurs. I think it's yeah. uh, it's a, it's a great thing, and I hope it does make a lot of people successful. Right. Okay. Uh, just a question more now, Lynette. If you had one piece of advice to give to any entrepreneur who's just about starting their own journey, what would that piece of advice be? Well, I suppose the fact that they they're starting a journey, anyhow, they've chosen something that they really want to do or make, and in the food business. So they must be sure of that they must be sure that people, if they're going to be in a niche market, then that's fine to be in a niche, niche market. Uh, but getting into a bigger market all over the country is quite difficult. We've yeah. done it a little bit through Fab India, who've been one of our big customers. Okay. So they take it all over India. But uh, it's very difficult to do otherwise. We have got a distributor now who takes it all over India. but. Uh, it's not the same as your own local area or your own state even. Yeah. So I think, I think uh, and nowadays everything is evolving so fast. Maybe you need regular inputs from something like Maggie. Okay. Now, just before we round up, I've got three quick questions for you. Okay. If you could just answer them in one word. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. From your own jams, which is your favorite flavor? I think I'd say apricot. 
Okay. Now, if there was one character trait that a food entrepreneur should definitely have, what would that be? Uh, discerning taste. Whatever you make. If it's food, it's, you have to know and recognize the right type of taste, which makes it different from other people's. An Indian dish that is your favorite? Well, since I married into a Kashmiri Pandit family, and uh, my mother-in-law was a fantastic cook, Right. I did. I loved the food from the word go. I really did love their food, and uh, so I can still say I already. I can still say that same thing. Having the ron made the way my mother would have made it is fantastic. I I feel now that I'm looking back personally rather than looking forward. But if it's a Buhira's future, it, I think it's very linked up with my daughter-in-law Rebecca. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lynette. It's been lovely chatting with you. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll be back again next week with another special guest.